Praise the Lord, everyone, and welcome to the Scripture Cathedral. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Um, I hope everybody's staying safe. Uh, uh, there's a lot of flooding going on around the area, so make sure you stay safe. Um, hopefully you're in the house and don't have to come out. Um, but I want to make sure, and I hope that everyone is safe. I'm going to give you an opportunity to share this, uh, this particular discussion, or either call someone and tell them they need to get on now, and then I will start. Um, don't forget on this coming Sunday at 11 a.m. right here at the Scripture Cathedral, 7610 Central Avenue in Landover, Maryland at 11 a.m. We're going to have a time. Make sure you're here. The first lady of this church will be ministering. So I want you to make sure you're here. Ladies, come out and hear this powerful woman of God. I know women, they like to support each other. So I want you to come out and... Uh, Bring your, bring your family with you. Let me, let me go to my broadcast mode. I want you to call everybody you know. Call your friends, call your family, call your coworkers, call everybody you know and tell them to meet you at the Scripture Cathedral on this coming Sunday at 11 a.m. Now, I shouldn't have to tell the members that. They automatically got their seat. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes uh, I, I wonder because uh, our services start at 11 and Sunday I believe we was out by 12:30 and at that time some people were walking in the door praise the Lord praise the Lord but make sure you're here at 11 o'clock um, sometimes there's a blessing in being on time you never know what God is going to do so make sure you're in the building tonight I want to talk about something um, that God has been talking to me about and uh, let me make my statement first and then we'll move into it because we often do not realize the degree of Satan's cunning ingenuity or his cleverness we are frequently unprepared for the battle we are called to fight against him and his dark forces Consequently, we end up living defeated lives. There are a lot of Christians that are living defeated lives. They're wondering why things are going wrong. It's because you don't understand the enemy that you're fighting. Uh, this is why it is so important to identify, identify the devices of Satan. It is only when we are aware of his tactics that we can effectively wage war against him. Um, I know in, in, in when you're in sports, you have to study film. You, you have to know your opponent. Um, they try to pick up on your, uh, what is it, your, 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 your tendencies. That's right. They try to see if they can look to the side and see what kind of plays that the defensive coordinator is calling or the offensive coordinator is calling. So you have to change up on them sometime. Same thing with the devil. The devil, believe me, he's studying you. He's studying each and every one of us. Sometimes I like to say it this way, I think he know more about us than we know about ourselves. But so how do you, how do you, how do you, uh, how do you study the enemy? Well, you got to read your word. It will give you the map on how to fight the devil. You got to study your word. You got to pray. You got to fast. I know the old folk used to say, if you don't fast, you won't last. If you don't pray, you won't stay. <laughs> so tonight, let's look at several of Satan's devices. Several of Satan's devices. Number one device is unforgiveness 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 is a big hindrance to our relationship with God 
some of us cannot forgive ourselves because Satan reminds us of our past mistakes. Let me do this first. If anyone is in here that never made a mistake, would you please come to the front of the building? So Satan will use that against you. He will use your past mistakes. Or maybe we hold grudges against those who are responsible for hurts in our past. See, notice I didn't say that we done anything to them, but we hold grudges because of how they hurt us. Sometimes you gotta let it go. Whatever the case, unforgiveness is a tool that Satan uses to keep us separated from ourselves, from others, and most importantly, from God. You see, if we do not forgive ourselves, then we will most likely not reach full repentance. Hmm. Part of repenting is you have to forgive. So you will not reach full repentance. And if we do not repent, then God cannot forgive us. Have you ever had somebody to do something to you and you tried to stick to your guns and say, I'm not, no, I didn't do anything. I'm not going to say I'm sorry. But you know, I, I found out sometimes you got to say you're sorry even when you haven't done anything. That's how you become free. At the same time, if we do not forgive our brothers or sisters trespasses, we are not in a position to receive full forgiveness and healing from God. You have to position yourself. So what the devil does is he uses this device of unforgiveness to keep you down, to keep you angry. That's what he does. So y'all sitting here looking at me, but would y'all agree that unforgiveness can stunt your growth in Christ? Hmm. Come on, I, I grudges, need you. There grudges, you go. Grudges are real, and bitterness is real. It's a real something that can really take root in your life. And you know, um, I just keep thinking about the prayer: "Forgive us our debts, as we forgive, or forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us." And a lot of times we want God to do all this, give us all this mercy and grace, but yet and still there's certain instances and times in our lives that we feel like we have the, the ability to judge and to determine who we're going to forgive and who we're not going to forgive, mm -hmm. who we're going to have mercy on, who we're not going to have mercy on. And all the while, all we're doing is creating a block between us and God because That's we're right. distancing ourselves because he can't operate when there's that in the middle. So if we want to be like Christ, what did he say when he was on the cross? Did not he say, forgive them for they know not what they do? In other words, there are people that do things to you and they don't even know they're doing it. <laughs> but you got to forgive them. There's some type of demonic force that gets in people and they do things to you but what they will do and I will talk about that I got to talk about that next week I've got to go back to that Jezebel spirit what happens is they will flip it and make you look like you are the one that's wrong they become the victim but you got to learn how to forgive God gives us authority to release ourselves and others from bondage of forgiveness. All you got to do is look at Matthew 18 and 18. Verily I say unto you, whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. It is crucial as God's children that we take steps to break these bonds of forgiveness. Well, listen, when we don't forgive, we give Satan an in, I in. We give him an in to our lives. You open the door for him when you don't forgive. Now, let me see, I have to I have to do this because some people they are naive. When you forgive someone, 
that doesn't mean you forget what they done to you. Let me show you, even my dog knows when he done wrong and I get on him, he know the next time I'm gonna run the other way. He knows. So once, if somebody does something to you, you can forgive them, but you cannot forget. He that forgets the past is destined to repeat it. And you better believe that the person that did something to you, at some point, they may try to do it again. So you can't forget. You cannot forget how they did it. Some things hurt, and, and, and I don't like to hurt. Anybody like to hurt? I don't like to hurt. So I'm not going to forget, but I will forgive you. This end provides him with new opportunities to cause strife and dissension between ourselves and other Christians. Okay? 2 Corinthians 2, 9 through 11, and I'm going to read this from the Message Bible. This is Paul. He had a letter he was writing. He said, the focus of my letter wasn't on punishing the offender, but on getting you to take responsibility for the health of the church. That's why so many churches are messed up. You got people sitting right next to each other that hate each other in church. That's unhealthy. Very unhealthy. You got people that come to church and they cannot say praise the Lord to you. They can't shake your hand. I have a problem with that because that's the kind of stuff we used to do out in the street. If somebody had something against me, or I had something against them, I'll go a step further than that. If my friend had something against them, I would be like, you know what, we don't like them. And I never had an opportunity to get to know the person. But how do you bring that in church? Somebody explain that. How do you bring that in church? And that is exactly what Paul was doing in this letter here. Somebody was being somebody who was corrected was being brought back into the fold and he was saying i am now saying that this person is fine mm. so on the account of my word and based on your trust with me i need you to regard this person now as a brother you need to let that go mm -hmm. because what what we would do is we would kind of hold a seat of self-righteous to say that person doesn't deserve my forgiveness, even though the offense may not have happened to me personally. Mm. But I can look at something from across the street and say, that was wrong what that person did. Even though it didn't even affect me personally, right. I can hold a grudge, you know, and Paul was saying, do not let the enemy take advantage of you because I'm restoring a person right now. Mm. And you need to let, if even if they don't have enough cachet, let, my, let, let your trust in me be enough to let this one go. Let me read that again. The focus of my letter wasn't on punishing the offender, but on getting you to take responsibility for the health of the church. So if you forgive him, I forgive him. Don't think I'm carrying around a list of personal grudges. <laughs> The fact is that I'm joining in with your forgiveness. And, I mean, as Christ is with us, guiding us. After all, we don't want to unwittingly give Satan an opening for yet more mischief. We're not oblivious or ignorant to his sly way. So if you continue to hold those grudges, that gives the devil an opportunity to come in, whether it's the church, your house, your car, your job, it gives them an opportunity to come in and continue to do some slick stuff. You got a lot of slick stuff going on in church. It's a lot of slick stuff. A lot of slick stuff in, in, in religious organizations. A lot of slick stuff. That's because of unforgiveness. <laughs> Let me make a personal note right here. It's that this is that forgiveness is a great part 
of the Christian faith and is demanded by Christ. It's not a choice. It's demanded by Christ. Can I move on? Or anybody else got anything? You want me to move on? Because the church is the body. Mm -hmm. The body is like I can't hate my arm. And I can't hate my leg. It's a part of me. That's right. Even though it's sometimes I might not act right, I might get upset about it. But I need it. So, and a lot of times what people do, they take their old ways because they're not fully delivered. Hmm. They have repented. They repented of what they wanted to repent of. But when you repent, you automatically turn away. So when a person ends up hurting you, it does take a lot because you're in that flesh. Mm -hmm. But mentally and spiritually, you have to continue to tell yourself to think positive that you have to forgive that person. And a lot of times, with, that's where the attack comes. When you see a person constantly, that's the hardest one. When I don't have to see you all the time, that's the easy one. Mm -hmm. So if I see you all the time at church and you praising God and you hurt me, it's hard for me to forgive because of why are you praising him after you done hurt me? Mm. So it's, it's a struggle. But see, that, that's, 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 that's a strategy that the devil can use. Yes. You're sitting there be like, look what they done to me. Mm -hmm. Now you can't even get into the service. You can't even praise God. Yes. Look what they done to me. And they up there shouting. The interesting thing about that is if, when those types of things happen sometimes, the individual that's, that's been hurt, the person that did the hurting, may or may not know that they've done it. Sometimes people don't know if they've offended you. And when, when you fall into that category and then you start um, re rebelling, if you will, against the ideology that we're supposed to forgive because Christ told us to. He told us in a parable. There, it was a parable where, um, and I'm, I'm sure I'm going to mess the, the parable up, but there was a gentleman who actually, he was supposed to have forgiven his brother. And there, the question was thrown out, you know, should you do it? And he was like, no, 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 because... Uh, they did this, that, and the third. When Jesus said to him, well, I forgave you. So who are you not to forgive somebody, whether they hurt you or not? And, and I get it. I've been hurt. I mean, I've had people to, that I feel like did me wrong. But you're not truly free until you release that pain, that disgust, that anger, or whatever it is. If you hold on to it, then you're going to be in bondage for the rest of your life. You cannot move past that hurt to enjoy the rest of your life if you don't forget. That's right. Not only that, that person becomes your service. Yeah. When you come to church, you don't see the pastor, you don't hear the word, you see that person. Mm -hmm. And so it begins to control you. But when you learn how to praise over certain things and block people out, I forgive you, like pastor has said, it's that always, every day you're learning something new. So there's a lesson learned. That person might not do it to me again, but another person might come with the same tactics. So it's a lesson learned. So I just keep learning. Every time you get hurt, you're just learning from it, that you have to learn how to forgive because somebody has to turn around and forgive you. Right. I, I think that forgiveness takes a supernatural strength. And God always talks about him giving us a heart of flesh and not a heart of stone. And when certain things happen, we misconstrue being strong with being hard because stuff can happen to us and we're getting that that'll never happen to me again nobody will ever do that and you gotten hard but you didn't get strong because let that happen again you become brittle you'll break and you won't last too long but if god can give you a heart of flesh and you can have the muscle in in, in spirit to say i can move past that forgive that person meaning not requiring any apology or repayment, right? But I can readjust my expectations of that person to know, okay, he's a level four trust. And I messed up because I thought he was level eight. Mm -hmm. And I let him in and gave him information or access that they wasn't mature enough for. So now I'll forgive you, but I'm going to reassess the level of access you got now. Hmm. Hey, Pastor, I got a question for you. Okay. You know, say, for instance, uh, I mean, when we really talking about forgiveness, it's almost like when we go to God 
it's easy for us to go to God, but like we just don't see him. You know what I'm and I'm saying he's not sitting, literally sitting in front of So it's easy to say to God, Lord, forgive me or something, right? But when you offend somebody and you personally don't go back to and say, you just go to God and never say it to that person, that's still a problem. You, you have to. You have, you have to, to get it straight. Yeah. The Bible says if you have an art against your brother, brother that's right. you got to go to him. And until you do that, you, you know, we, we skipped this. We, we like taking curves around steps instead of following the principle. I mean, I've, I, I believe I've offended somebody before. I went to him, and when I got a chance to catch up with him, I, I, I told him, being an elder, being a minister, I was an elder at the time, hey, I told him I was sorry, you know? And that's a hard thing, believe it or not, it's a hard thing to do when you know you're wrong about something. It takes a time to process it, but are you, are you saved enough to ask for forgiveness from somebody that you know that you have talked about, did something wrong to? Now, the problem is this. Like First Lady said, you come and shout, but is the shout good? Is the tongue good? Is all of that stuff, is your give, is our giving good? Until we re put that repentance in front of that person that we have offended, is what we're doing, is it in vain, or is it good, or is it bad, or are we, are we, still, for, are we still forgiven? Anything that is not forgiven, is a, as Mr. Thompson said, is a form of bondage. And you remain in bondage until forgiveness is recognized. So that's a, that's a, that's a huge problem throughout the, throughout the body of Christ. Nobody wants to say, I'm sorry. There's a saying we used, used to say, who's going to be the bigger man? We used to say that. I've had this 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 thought roll through my head. It's it's hard to forgive somebody like Elder Johnson said when you know you've hurt them, but it's hard to for it's it's just as hard to forgive somebody when you have um, a a disagreement, if you will, and if you are right. In for example, um, you discipline somebody, and uh, according to whatever the, the bylaws of the ministry are, um, and you know that you're right, or you don't let somebody get away with a particular thing. And it doesn't have to be anything major. It could be something as simple as, um, you know, we don't smoke on the premises. And, and then they're mad at you, and you're like, wow, I, I didn't even, I didn't even, I didn't come at them wrong. I wasn't angry, I wasn't upset, or any of those things. It, but you have to go to that person, because there is friction. Mm -hmm. And there, it, it will remain unless you are, quote, unquote, the bigger person. Say, so, you know what? It's not even worth it. I'm sorry if I, if I you know, came across sideways or whatever. Um, please forgive me and then move on. And ironically enough, I've, I've literally had that happen, like with an older saint. And I was like, I didn't even do nothing to you. But saints, there were other saints that said, you need to fix it. Mm. See, I'm going back to what you said, First Lady, earlier you said the body. There's something called a pinky toe. When you hit it on something, it hurt just like if you hit your head. Matter of fact, it can hurt worse. You got to understand. So you got to understand that forgiveness, no matter how big or how small it is, you got to forgive. It's very important. It can, it can, it could be holding up your blessing, and you don't think so. It could actually be holding up your blessing. And you have, I'm, I'm trying to stress this, the scripture cathedral. I had to have a lesson myself. You got to forgive. Got yeah. to. Pastor, I was going to say, um, and sometimes people will take whatever offense that they've experienced from an individual at the church and hold it against the church if it's not yes. cleared up. Yes. So that's why we always gotta, if we even feel like it, you know, that we've done something wrong, address it. This is a little off the record, but worst thing that I hate as a pastor, one of the worst things is, if somebody, one of y'all do to, some, to somebody, they assume that I did it. I hate assumption. You got to understand that. 
See, the pastor has to take a lot of blows for no, for no reason. There's a lot of times pastors stop things from happening, like, ho, oh, oh, ho, don't do that. Assumption. I was where I used to be, I'll tell you what it means. I would tell you that. <laughs> but you got to forgive. Device number two, pride of life. What is pride? Pride is puffed up, all-knowing, self-righteous, and governed by the flesh. Pride is when we are confident that we have everything all figured out when, in reality, we are following foolish human wisdom. Proverbs 14 and 12 says, and I'm, again, I'm from the Message Bible, there's a way of life that looks harmless enough. Look again. It leads straight to hell. Sure, those people appear to be having a good time, but all that laughter will end in heartbreak. Pride. Pride. See, people don't like to, they don't like to admit pride. Then don't get me wrong, there's good pride and there's bad pride. I'm talking about the bad pride. Got a lot of people. It's pride is bad when there is <clears throat> when you get to a point where there is there is no need of God. That's you know, right. you become self-sufficient mm -hmm. in everything you, you do when you don't acknowledge God. Um, and all you can see is, is yourself, really. All your prayers are about you. Everything got to be about you. If you ain't doing it, it ain't going to work. If you ain't there, it ain't going to happen. Right. It, it's not, that's, it's, it, all you see, it's just the same principle as Satan. It's the same thing that destroyed him. They need me. Yep. And he, and, and I mean, you name it, in glory, Satan could do it. Only thing he didn't have was the throne. But everything right. else, he could do it. He, he saw himself, and at that point, um, my God, man, the worst thing with, you could do with pride is, is self self-exhortation hmm. to lift your own self up it's 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 it's, it's, you, it's all about you pride it's so is subtle, though. like pride is so subtle and it has an opposite end of that spectrum too because you can be self-conscious because hmm. pride is you're you're overly concerned about how you come off or how you look and sometimes we um we, we may disassociate ourselves with something because of the fear of how we may look or the difficulty that it may have. Um, you know, you may get assigned to a work that's an uphill battle and you may go into it knowing it's a losing battle. But because you, but you don't see God's wisdom in, there's been countless things that I've had to work towards that didn't work out well, but I couldn't say, well, I'm only going to get involved if I know it's going to be a sure win because anything other than success will make me look bad. To who? But sometimes pride can show itself in fear. They say, I won't get involved because I don't know what's going to happen. Mm. I won't get involved because I want something to be a sure thing so I don't come off as a failure. Pride can also be the other end of the spectrum instead of self-exaltation. It can be overly self-conscious and you excluding yourself instead of including yourself on everything. Let me show you, let me, give, let me, let me uh, get things a little uh, humorous in here. I've uh, been ministering, Spirit of God comes in, people trying to come through with the Holy Ghost. And there's a preacher over there with his nice white on. <laughs> Listen where I'm going. He was said back, not today, I'm not going. They ain't getting nothing on my white. <laughs> That's pride. When, hey, that's why they got to clean us. If it don't come out, I'll buy another white suit. You're going to lose souls because of your pride. 
<laughs> he be I just, the uh, one that you touch. Oh, yeah. Dirty. Yeah. Then, see, but that's why I got to make sure when I see that, I got to make sure the devil don't get it into me and let me put something on him. <laughs> when he leaves out, somebody going to hug him and get makeup on oh, his car. yeah. Pride almost always comes before a fall. That's why Satan got kicked out of, uh, out of heaven. He was prideful. I can do this. Why he got to have that? Mm. Many civilizations have collapsed because of pride. Many homes have been broken because of pride. Many souls have been lost because of pride. As Proverbs 16 and 18 explains, pride goes before destruction and a haunty spirit before a fall. Pride can be difficult to identify in our own lives, especially since pride, by its very nature, makes us susceptible to overlooking our faults. People that's prideful, they never, they never wrong. Never. Never wrong. Like some of us husbands are with our wives. I'm not wrong. <laughs> Honey, you supposed to took that turn. No, I wasn't. <laughs> you got to go 10 miles down the road to go back where you're supposed to turn. That's what happens. We don't look. When you prideful, you don't see your faults. None at all. That's crazy. Pride can, pride can also cause you to go into isolation. Mm. Like to separate yourself from everybody. That's right. And feel like you know what well, that's called, Mike. That's called that's an attitude of I'm better than everybody else. I'm better than my constituents. I don't have to deal with them. They're beneath me. Pride. But pride is pride is completely destructive. There's nothing good about it. It is destructive. If you looked at the M.O. of Satan, when he became prideful, he took, listen, he took a third of heaven. People that refused to listen to God because they followed after his prideful ways. I mean, think about this. We're just humans. This dude took a third of heaven because he became prideful. prideful, And everybody, you know, and, and sometimes we feel like um, the glam is right. You know, um, going spiritually high, ha 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 ha. Everybody, oh, he's right. That don't necessarily that don't necessarily mean that. It is it is difficult, and there's very few. If you could find true humility among some brothers, then you have found a jewel. Godly humility brings great gain. You can't lose, but. When you look for the, the, well, we just read a few seconds ago that pride is destructive and it can destroy. And when you destroy something, it's no putting it back together. And a third of heaven, listen, a third of, Satan took a third of heaven with him. And that happened there. You can imagine what's going on in the earth when I'm done. See, the thing about pride, pride won't let you forgive nobody. Because you think you're right. You know, you, you see, I think I remember, I think it was Sean. And I'm, I'm going to say this to, 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 to ministers or whomever, whatever position you, you hold in ministry. If you get up and you preach and everybody, the anointing comes in and you'll say, look what I did. That's what Satan's problem was. Look what I did. Look what I can do. No, 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 no. See, and you've had that experience. <laughs> uh, Sean's song in the glory of God came in the building. And he got, Bishop Long got in the mic and said, don't think you did that. Yeah, that's right. But it can happen. Ah, I'm the best singer here. It's important to say that you have to be careful not to forget those moments. That's right. Because two, two things that time does, time puts distance between you and what 
the, the, the instruction that you receive, and it also puts distance between your ability to recall. So when, if, if you don't recall that it wasn't you, when people start patting you on your back mm. and saying how good you sound or how good you preached or whatever it was, those things can come back if you're not killing them daily. Man, you preach better than the pastor. Oh, yeah? Run. <laughs> Run. That's right. Run. Mm -hmm. Prideful people cannot see themselves. A person with pride can't see themselves. Mm. They are always right. They don't do nothing wrong. Mm. And a lot of times, it comes from them holding a title, majority of the time, they're holding a title that causes them to think that they're the one. When you're not the one, God is the one. You know, and sometimes, let, let me, sometimes people think, pastor, me, that I'm prideful. No, it's just authority. It's a difference. You gotta understand. And when I'm, when I'm watching over the flock, it could look like pride. See, and that's why I say it's good pride and bad pride, because I'm proud of Scripture Cathedral. But some people get it mixed up. They think, look at Pastor D. And, you know, I, I never forget, because my dad used to always say, because he had broad shoulders, and they would look, look how he walking. That's him. He can't help the way he walk. He can't help God gave him broad shoulders. He ain't giving me none. You know? It's like... I'm like, you know, he would, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm literally, he would go, he would go to churches, he would go to conventions and everything, and they were like, look at him, who he, just because you carry yourself a certain way, see, that's why you, sometimes you cannot just judge a person by how you see them, you got to get to know them, you got to understand that, you can't, I can't look over there and, at, 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 at this young man in the audience and say, look at him, he thinks he's prideful, how? You know, if that's the case, we all be messed up. But in cases like that, most of those individuals have the problem that they're accusing you of. Oh. And those are, the, the individuals who really had a problem are you're prideful and you have a reason to be prideful about. Mm. For Satan's example, he had, he could do a lot, he could do that's things right. nobody else could do. That's when pride can really be harmful to other people. When pride is just destructive to yourself is when you love you and ain't nobody else trying to follow you. Like, <laughs> so in order to make yourself feel good, you, dim you diminish everybody around you. Mm. And, that, and that's really pride in yourself, just trying to make everybody else smaller because you don't have what you think it takes to be regarded like that. That's why some people will look at titles as ranks when it's really responsibility. Mm. <laughs> right. I don't know I'm going to go back to this because Elder Johnson said that Satan took a third with him. That's why in ministry, as a pastor, I got to watch everybody. When you got people that's going, talking to people, and I don't even see it, but then some, some discernment says you better watch that. See, people, people will do with the devil. They'll try to build their stage right in your, in your church. And you'd be like, wait a minute. And I'm going to prove it because something happened a couple of weeks ago, and I'm like, wait a minute. When they at church, I don't never see them talking to each other. Never. As a matter of fact, look like to me, they over there with their nose turned up at them. But then you find out they over their house. They, they, they on the phone. They together. That's right. I'm like, wait a minute now. So I got to be watchful. Got to be in that watchtower. And, 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 and I pray to God. I, I know I got discernment, but I tell him, give me more. I got to know, I got to know each and every member. I got to know them. I got to know them. I got to know what they will do and what they won't do. Got to know that. That's a hard job. I can't overlook nobody. They gotta know them. Let's take let's 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 check. 
Let's check our pride level. Those of you in the audience, let's check our pride level. Those that you sitting up here, you ready? Ask yourself the following questions. And I want you to be honest when you answer them. I want you to score yourself. You ready? Number one, can I be corrected or admonished? Can I be corrected or admonished without an attitude? There you go, without getting upset. Number two, can I listen and learn from someone else? Man, you can't tell me nothing. Man, here I am, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm the pastor and I listen to people. I have to. See, some people have been through experiences that I haven't been through, so I got to listen. I don't care who they are. A kid can come up to me and say something, for real? That's what that means? Okay, thank you. Then I'll use it in the next sermon. <laughs> got to. Number three, do I look down on people of low estate? You got people sitting in the church that look down on you. I want you to know that. They think they better than you. I'm going to drive that home, but I'm going to run that up out of here too. Do I try, number four, do I try to keep up with the Joneses? Keep on. You will go broke. You sure will. Keeping up with the Joneses. That's what I'm Pastor got a Mercedes. I'm going to get one. Try to keep up with Joneses. You don't know what I got to do to keep that Mercedes. You don't know if I'm hiding it right now. So they won't come and get it. You don't know. You go get one, you lose it, lose your house and everything. Number five, do I do whatever it takes to have fame, fortune, and popularity? That's just five simple, five simple questions about pride. Number three, this is the last one I have for today. The lust of the flesh. That's his other device. Lust of the flesh. Just because it sounds good, feels good, and tastes good, doesn't mean it's right. Just because everyone else is doing it, doesn't mean you should. It is very easy to succumb to the ways of the world, to compromise our standards until our lives are characterized by the lust of the flesh. As Christians, however, we are called to something higher. What is lust of the flesh? I like to define it as those things that satisfy our natural man, but bring sickness to our spiritual man. Let me see here. Let's read Galatians 5, 19 through 21. This is Paul again. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, are these adultery, fornication, uncleanness, cleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulation, wrath, strife, sedition, heresies, envyings, murders, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time, past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God shall not inherit the kingdom of God. What happened was they fussing about traditions and doctrine and rules and circumcision and Paul was saying, hold up, what about the flesh sins? So I was sitting there and I said, let me, maybe people don't understand what flesh sins are, so let's break it down. Adultery. That's voluntary sexual relations between a married person with a person who is not his or her spouse. Okay? Everybody, well, we know that, right? Okay? Fornication. 
sexual relations between two people not married to each other. And I'm going to go out a little further between a man and a woman. <laughs> and you can, if you do, it's still fornication. If you're messing around with the same sex, that's fornication. Okay? That's even worse. Uncleanness is morally or spiritually impure, infected with harmful supernatural contagion, which is communication of disease from one person to another by contact. Watch who you hang with. I keep saying it. Like, you unclean. You're hanging with somebody that's got a disease. You need to put a mask on. <laughs> hanging with them. Lasciviousness. That means to be driven by lust, preoccupied with or exhibiting lustful desires. All right? Adultery. Extreme admiration, love, or reverence for something or someone. Extreme. It doesn't matter. You, only, you reverence them more than you reverence God. Extreme. Witchcraft. See, I'm going down that, I'm going down that, what, what Paul was talking about. Witchcraft, the exercise of alleged supernatural power to control people or events. Practices typically involving sorcery or magic. Ladies and gentlemen, let me let you know, you got witches in the pews. There are witches right in church. They want you to think that they're spiritual. They're not spiritual. They're witches. I, would, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I'm going to put it this way. They're in everybody's church. You got witches everywhere. See, that wraps right around that Jezebel spirit. Witches. Just like you got snakes in the pews and termites in the, you got witches. You got something, Saudi? No, it, another word that goes along with that is enchanted. Mm. Like when he talked to the foolish, foolish Galatians, he was like, who bewitched you or who enchanted you? Sometimes mm. it may not be in the occultic witchcraft practice that most people may think of. Right. But somebody who tries to overly impress you to astonish or amaze you, that's enchanting. I had a dream about you last night, mm. right? Like, why do you have to convince me how deep you are before you tell me whatever you think you need to tell me? Because they're trying to convince. You know, you know what that's called? That's called manipulation. Yeah. That's what they're trying to do. They're trying to manipulate you. That's what they're doing. And it, it, like you said, they were, I had a dream about you. Martin Luther King had a dream too. <laughs> All right? That's why when, when people start telling you that type of stuff, oh, wait, let's go tell Pastor together about your dream. Oh. No, that ain't going to happen. <laughs> no, no, let's go tell. You know, let me, let me say this. You know what I'm tired of? I'm tired of me as pastor knowing things after everybody else know it. Y'all can't help people in certain situations. They come to you. They come to you. They come to you. But they don't go to me. And then the person gets an attitude because pastor didn't do nothing about it. I didn't know. Oh, and with that, and the reason why they don't want them to go to the pastor because they know pastor already knows their game. Oh. So nine times out of ten, you'll go there's certain people that just have borrowed money from me written on their forehead, right? <laughs> and they just know who to go to. That's right. Right? At first, it always starts with a compliment. Mm. Then it comes with a threat. Mm. If that doesn't work, it comes with intimidation. Mm. So they're going to try to befriend you. If that doesn't work, they're going to say, man, ain't no love here, whatever. If other people knew. That's right. I'm like, wow, well, let me do this so I can make this situation go down. And then after you already get in relationship with them, they say, well, if you don't do what I say, I'm going to expose you. I thought you were my friend in the beginning. Mm. So the last resort of it is, 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 is threats. But they're going to always come with a compliment. They're going to be the best, sweetest person in the world mm. until you tell them no. 
You want right. to know what a spirit is? Tell it no. That's right. And see what happens. What'd you say you got on your on your forehead? <laughs> Borrow money from me. <laughs> Bank. <laughs> Let me go. Number seven. Hatred. Intense dislike or ill will. That's hatred. Variance. The quality of being different, divergent, or inconsistent. I'm going down the list and I'm sitting here like, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. You you tell me this is this this is the one I was talking about earlier today. I told somebody you're gonna understand this one. Emulation, effort to match or surpass a person or achievement, typically by intimida- uh, Im- imitation, mm-hmm. acting like somebody, mm-hmm. just so they can surpass you. Mm-hmm. Mm. Emulate you, emulator. Mm-hmm. Mm. Gotcha. Wrath. Extreme anger. Deeply resentful. Vengeance or punishment as the consequence of anger. I don't know. That's, what you, that's why you don't want the wrath of God. <laughs> wrath. Strife. Anger or bitter disagreement over fundamental issues. In other words, conflict. Y'all don't see that in church? Yeah. This is Paul's like, no, y'all want to talk about circumcisions and tradition stuff. Let's talk about this flesh stuff. That's what he was saying. So, what is this? Sedition? Sedition. Conduct or speech inciting people to rebel against authority. <laughs> y'all don't know no sedition. What, what would you call them? Seditioners? <laughs> Sedition. This is in the church. Y'all, y'all, look, this is in the church. Everything I'm talking about is in the church. Heresies. A formal denial or doubt of a core doctrine of the Christian faith. Sitting right in here, sitting right over there as a preacher, but you don't believe it. Don't believe it. Envyings, a feeling of resentful, discontent, begrudging, admiration, or covetousness with regard to another's advantages, possessions, or attainments. You ever heard somebody say, man, I envy you? Better watch them. I envy you. (laughs) Of course, murder, unlawful, premeditated killing. Some people are killing spiritual people. They're killing them, the spiritual man. They'll try to kill your spiritual man. They'll try to murder it. They it's premeditated mean they sitting at home, they laying in their bed thinking, how am I going to kill pastor? How am I going to kill so-and-so? How am I going to do it? And, and pastor, it's interesting because it doesn't have to necessarily be on a physical level. That's what be, I'm saying. It can be your, your character. Yes. Like people Assassination. Were, They'll, they'll, they'll go after your character and say, like, they, it could be all good about you. And, and they will find a chink in your armor, if you will, and, and try to shine a light just on that. It's amazing. You can do good all your life. That's right. And if you make one misstep, that's the thing that they look at to try to pull you down. Mm. Drunkenness, a disturbance in behavior or mental function during or after alcohol consumption. There are people that's in church that drink. Y'all know that, right? Yes, they haven't been de- delivered yet. <laughs> Revelings. <laughs> Taking great pleasure or delight in sin. Mm. Reveling. All these flesh sins cause you not to inherit the kingdom of God. Not can't inherit it. Where am I at? Let me okay, yeah. Can't inherit it. Are you walking in the flesh? Look through the following list. If the following attitudes or behaviors characterize your life, you may be walking in the flesh. Number one, I don't have a clear conscience. I feel regretful 
ashamed, and or guilty. I rationalize, justify, and make excuses. I cover up, hide, pretend, and remain in a state of denial. I still lie and deceive. Sound like you characterize that sound like you got the characteristics of the devil. Mm. Pastor, I'm sorry, I didn't know you. Go ahead. Um in Psalms 106, verse um, 14 and 15, it talked about the children of Israel, and it says, But lusted exceedingly in the wilderness, and tempted God in the desert, and he gave them their request. So they, you could still pray, but be in the flesh. Mm -hmm. And he gave them their request and sent leanness into their souls. So while he was, when eating manna wasn't enough and they asked for quail, God sent them an abundance of quail, but they received leanness in their soul. Their body got fat, but their spirit man starved to death. Because they wanted what they lusted for so much. God said, all right, go ahead. You can have it, but it's a price. You won't inherit that kingdom, though. You, you know why they, if I'm, if I'm out in the wilderness, right, with everybody that's like me, how do I lust after something? And I'm going to show you why. The reason why is because they had some Egyptians with them. That's why they said, man, when we was back there, we had onions and leeks and all that. That's, I, oh, I never forget the sermon, mixed multitude. They messed up. They should have left them jokers right there in Egypt and left on their own, but they took the mixed multitude. Yeah, I understand that. Mixed multitude, then I guess, I mean, we got to think some of them ended up marrying each other. So at that point, then here come generational stuff. Mm. Mixed multitude. How do you escape the flesh? We are called to fight against the flesh by walking in the spirit. Second Corinthians 10, 3 through 5 says, in the New Living Testament, we are human, but we don't wage war as humans do. We use God's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons, to knock down the strongholds of human reasoning and to destroy false arguments. We destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. We capture their rebellious thoughts and teach them to obey Christ. So, those are the three devices that the, that the devil uses. Those are his most popular devices. What's number one? Unforgiveness. Number two, pride. Number three, sins of the flesh. That's what you call, once he gets you like that, he got you cornered. You got you, so you got to be careful. You got to be very careful. And, I'll, and, I, and it's true, this, 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 this battle that we are in is not a natural battle. It's a spiritual battle. The devil don't care nothing about your skin. He wants your soul. He wants your spirit. He don't care how pretty you are, how ugly you are, how big you are, how small. He don't care. He wants that soul. That's what he wants. See, even, even at that, Elder Johnson, he's still prideful because he's trying to outdo God. Every day he's trying. I got more. I got more coming to hell than you got coming to heaven. That's what he. That's he's that pride. He can't let it go. So the question is, <laughs> this is just something. Came, can the devil get saved? <laughs> he won't. That's right. He got. He won't. He he won't forgive. He. You think he'll ever go to God and say, "I'm sorry," without a motive? That's right. Will he ever go? Will he? Will he ever let go of his pride? Mm. Will he ever 
uh, uh, let go of those sins of the flesh. He's, he's increasing. He's coming out with new stuff, new devices. But those are his main devices. And I, 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 as a pastor, am trying to tell people, don't get caught up. Don't let the devil use his devices on you. We have power over him. See, when, when, when you know who your father is, when you are a, a king's kid, see, I'm pretty sure uh, when, when, when uh, what's his name? The prince and the princess that left or whatever, they had a baby. When he get a certain age and understand, he can tell people, I don't want that. And they got to give it to him. Because he's in royalty. I'm in royalty. When I tell Satan, get back, he got to get back. When I tell him to leave my family alone, he got to leave them alone. We do not exercise our authority on the devil. We lay down like we some type of punks or something. But you got to fight that rascal back. And you fight him with the word of God. You fight him with your prayers and your fasting. He knows that too. So if the, his, his, his thing is to give you an illusion. That's what he does. Gives you an illusion like, how are you going to get out of this one? Or he'll give you, I can help you out of this. No. no. What, what, did, what did God tell him when he was up on that mountain? Get behind me. Yeah. Satan belongs behind me. That, that, that's what you got to understand. So, and the other thing we got to understand, if he tempted God himself, why do you think he's not going to come after you? And he used his word. Yes, that's what I'm saying. He does. He uses the Bible. I think Satan knows the Bible better than us. He knows it. He, he, that's, see, he, ah, I, I'm glad you said that. Because when we, when we read the word and study the word, do we use it? He does. Or do we? But we only, we only see, this is what we got to get, uh, get out of as African-American church folk. Always wanting God to bless us with something. I need a blessing. We always look for material things. When it simply says, Matthew 6 and 30, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Wait a minute, though. That's hard. How am I going to stay righteous? I got these sins of the flesh. How am I going to stay right? I can't do that. But I still want him to bless me with this car and this house. That's right. Huh? You got to seek the kingdom. Kingdom folk don't worry about what's for dinner tonight. Kingdom folk don't worry about where they're going to lay their head. Kingdom folk don't worry about what they're going to drive because it's automatic. Automatic. Don't have to worry about that. Kingdom folk don't have to worry about uh, uh, foreclosure. Snatch man. God doesn't, why, why would God give you something, if he did, and let you lose it? It don't sound right, do it. And, and when you're seeking the kingdom, sometimes we don't seek his kingdom in all things. That's exactly. So to seek God's kingdom is to, find, is to seek his dominion. God, where is your border mm. in this situation? Seek his righteousness is to seek his way. So, God, where is your dominion in this, and what is your way? But if I do anything without first acknowledging him, I'm outside his kingdom. That's right. There, he has no responsibility to me in that regard. If I just go and do something on my own accord, he's not responsible. He's not liable for my well-being. And, and truth be told, I believe God speaks to people. God could have said no. Yeah. And you did it anyway. Now, back to the kingdom. We, you know, we're talking about houses and cars. I believe, I believe, if you marry somebody that's not in kingdom or don't have kingdom principles or not seeking, you're done. That's why you cannot be unequally yoked. That's, that's why, that's why, that's why, 
the queen and all those have a problem when you marry outside of royalty. They have a problem. That's why they have it. You know, Pastor D, that's, a, that's, that's, that's the mindset of, of, of the church world. They don't know that they're royalty. Right. They don't know, they don't know that they, 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 what belongs to God, he cleans it, he sanctifies it, he makes it his own. It's personal to God. And you can't take what don't belong to you and give it to somebody else. The two will never, never, will never, never come together. A, a, a person that's not born of God don't have the same mindset as you do. And there's going to be conflict. And then you never go into something thinking you're going to change a person. No, you're not going to, you're not going to change them. You think you're going to change them? Only God can change them. Now, I'm not going to say and say it can never can happen, but I'm saying, you know, when you know the truth and you know the word, there is no way in the world that you're going to change their mind if God does not change it. I mean, you're asking for a, a, a fight that's going to be difficult to win. So, see, I'm sitting here thinking. See, sometimes... When other ministers are preaching, they think I'm asleep, but I'm thinking. You know, Pastor D, if I, if, if my wife, say, if my, well, if my, let's take my son. If he go out and he's American and he marry a Chinese lady and don't know Chinese and she don't know English, that's going to be a problem. That's going to be a problem, a big problem. It's going to be a problem. The communication between the two is 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 done. Is is you you there's there's no way there's going to be a win win there. They will never come to grips or an agreement on anything, and it's the, it's the same thing with with saved and unsaved. They were the two of them will never come to agreement on anything, and then here's the here's the sad part about it. It tells you that the children of darkness is wiser than the children of light. Guess what? When it comes down to deception, they will trick you faster than you will ever trick them because your mindset is never on tricking. It's always making them better. Mm. And their mindset is always, I'm going to get you no matter what it takes to get you. I'm going to get you. And, and look, at that point, may the best man win. And both, I mean, they could be both saved and still not ready for each other. Yeah, and, and, that's, and that's another point. The Bible says that the unbelieving one of the part, let them go. But at that point, somebody is not believing. You know, like you said, they can come in and say, you know, I agree and I agree. But at a certain point, if somebody's saying, I want to roll, and, they, and the Bible clearly says, if the unbelieving one of the part, you can't hold nobody to what they don't want to do. That's a problem. That's the okie doke. Yes. That's why people tell you, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna do this. When you get uh, when we get married, uh, and, mm -mm. no, 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 no. Do it before we get married. Don't don't do that. But going back to that, there's a scripture that says royal priesthood, yeah. chosen generation, peculiar people, peculiar, peculiar. That means you 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 you're strange, you're odd. <laughs> uncommon, unusual. These are the kind of people that we're, we're not supposed to be. We're not supposed to be like the world. We're supposed to be distinctively different. So y'all can call me crazy. You can call me weird, whatever. But I'm living a good life. The, the, the world is supposed to see us like that. We're not supposed to see each other like that. No. Like, you, I shouldn't look weird to you, and you shouldn't look weird. We're supposed to have the same mindset. But the world is supposed to be like, oh, man, there's something different about them. If we got differences in the church, like amongst ourselves, that is a huge problem. That means somebody is, like you pointed to earlier, somebody is emulating. They emulate. They're an emulator. And that's what you got. You got a lot of people that's sitting in that audience every Sunday that's emulating trying to obtain a position, emulating.
trying to make the pastor think, I'm saved. As soon as you leave the church, you're going to do everything you're big enough to do. I'm not crazy. That's, listen. You are causing yourself great harm when you're not serving God with everything you have. And you sit there and you wonder, why am I not moving forward in life? Sit down and check your record. You got to. You got to sit down and be like, Lord, what am I not doing? You got to understand that. Why am I, why is this, why is everything happening to me this way? I don't think there are no more Job's right now. I don't think none of us could take what Job took. Now, for Job to take what he took and still, because he was an upright man. So imagine if you're in church and you're not upright, what's going to happen to you? Job barely made it out. His own folk, his wife, man, go ahead, curse him, man, and die so I can get this insurance money. I'm bringing it on up to 2020. Go ahead and die. You ain't doing me no good being sick. So he, 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 he hung on. And he got double. But I'm saying that to say, I, 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 I'm, I'm off, I'm off, I'm off, off of my discussion. But I'm tired and sick of people coming to church just to obtain things, things from God. You, it's, it reminds me of when my daughter was young and I used to put her in the car and I used to say, if you be good, I take you to McDonald's. If you be good, I take you to get some ice cream. That's what people do. That's how they treat God. So if I be good this week, you going to bless me with that house? If I be good this week, you going to bless me with that car? Okay. God was like, okay, you get the car. And then you, all of a sudden, I got the car, I got the house, I ain't going to church now. But that's what you talked about. That's idolatry. Yes. Witchcraft is your desire to manipulate circumstances or people. Even God. Wow. So when you say, I'm going to do this, Lord, because I want but this. Saudi, 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 Saudi. Isn't that a little, uh, 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 what's the word? Isn't that a little crazy to think that you can manipulate God? It's crazy. Yo, he knows, he knows the next word that's coming out of my mouth, even if I'm stuttering. Why am I trying to manipulate him? Don't dare treat God like you treat a man. Don't do it. Don't do it. I'm trying to tell you. And James chapter 4 talks about that frustration you're talking about. Because he says, from whence come wars and fighting among you? Come they not hence, even of your lust, that war in your members? Ye lust and have not. Why am I not progressing? That's right. Ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. Ye fight and war, yet ye have not because ye ask not. And when you do ask, you don't receive it because you ask amiss that you may consume it upon your lust. So God the whole time is telling you no. That's right. Even when you're praying for it, you're still being spiritual in your activity, but you're perverted in your spirituality, and you feel a wall that you can't go past. And like, I'm in the line, but, but I'm you, not but you, giving. You, you, you're right. Yeah. But you know what they end up doing? They end up blaming the, blaming the pastor for their, their not being successful yes. or not moving forward. They blame the church. It creates a bitterness. That's right. Yeah. Read that, James, again. From whence come wars and fighting among you? Oh, so that's church folk. Yeah. Fighting amongst themselves. Fighting but they want to progress. Go ahead. Come they not hence, even of your lust, that war in your members? Okay, so that means they, things they want. The things they amongst, want. I got in you. themselves. In themselves, yep. okay. Ye lust and have not. Ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. Ye fight in war, yet ye have not, because ye ask not. Mm. Ye ask 
and receive not because ye ask amiss, that ye may consume it upon your lust. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that friendship of the world is enmity with God. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Oh, you can't serve two masters. You can't serve two. Capacity, that's, that goes back to what you was talking about, mortifying the flesh. It's the same, it's the same thing. Their, their motive and their intent is to please this body. Mm. At the end, of their agenda is self. That's right. And, and you will be a, <laughs> I hate to say, if I may use this analogy, look. It's no difference between a, a rich man committing adultery and a poor man committing adultery. Right. It's just they have better means. You know, one might go to the Ritz, some, the other one might be in Motel 6. No, in it's, the car. It's, a, it's, it's the same sin. It's, a, it's, a, it's the same sin. Uh -huh. And there, and we can use, we can, we can go even simpler than that. Anytime that you leave God, your, the things of God, Put them on the back burner, working three and four jobs when you and you you're, you're you're killing yourself. And any time that you would, any time you would do anything to me to further yourself in anything, it's just you're doing it to to please this body. And 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 as long as this body is pleased, you're okay. And it don't matter what you do. To, to do it because you're lustful. See, and, and a person like that is dangerous. It's dangerous. They will kill you yeah. to get what they want. What they want. That's yeah. right. They will tear you up. They will assassinate your character mm -hmm. to get what they want. Yes, sir. That's right. They will do it. They don't care. I don't care. They don't care at all. Nope. And, 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 and that's, that's it, 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 James said it. Mm. You keep asking. But you only, it's, you're asking amiss. Asking amiss. Because God knows what you're going to do. I want a, I want a car. It's better that you kept a bus because you can't get to where you want to go to do what you want to do. Mm, it's right. better that you keep catching a train because if you get the car, God knows he might not see you in church. Hmm. So you got to be careful. Those devices are something. Mm -hmm. Satan has devices. I just gave you three main ones, but there are a lot of devices that he uses. Mm -hmm. And that's what he does. He tries to he tries to wedge things between a pastor and his members. And that's why I refuse. No, you're not gonna do that. You have to look when 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 you confront the devil he'll flee. You gotta understand. Now and when you when they flee, that means you had a spirit. Now if, if you get confronted and you correct it, that means you was listening. But a lot of people don't like to listen. They'd rather run than listen. You got you know, run. I don't want to hear that. I'm gone. No. Sometimes, man, you get, I'd rather, I'd rather, for my parents, when I was younger, I'd rather to get the beating than to be put in, in, in lockdown. Just give me the beat. Let me get it over with. That's right. And this is funny, but there were times when uh, myself and Eddie especially would do something, and we knew at some point we was going to get it, but days were gone. We wasn't getting it. We wasn't getting it. Oh, we, ah. And then all of a sudden, I never forget in particular, I always remember this. It was my uncle's birthday. We used to live in Oxon Hill, Merlin, and everything was going so good and you know, cutting the cake and everything. After we cut the cake and everything, Bishop said, uh, Eddie and Donnell, I need to see you. Took his belt off. Beat us up the steps. But, but, but you, you got to understand, that's how people treat God. They think he forgot about it. But it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Judgment is coming. And you know where it starts at? Right in the house of God. That's some crazy stuff. People not opening their eyes and listening. It starts in the house. That means there's a lot of evil, non-respectful, non-reverence folk sitting right in the church. And you know what? I don't beat myself up no more. You know why? Because it happened all the way back in the Old Testament and it's still happening today. 
still. Yeah. We don't have we we don't have fear of God, the right fear. No. No fear of God. It, it's it's like, I mean, would you steal from your mother, then walk into her presence and say and ask her for some more money when you know you stole and from she her? No, no, and I, she, no, you wouldn't. No, you wouldn't. No, you would not. No. But how? That, how that's how we treat God. We we would do stuff, then walk right up in his face because we don't have, they have no fear. And it's almost like you said, it seemed like judgment is taking a long time to, 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 to catch up with some, with, with some of this stuff. You know what you got in church? You got a bunch of, what do they call those people? Fugitives. That's what you got. Oh, Lord. They've been running for a long time and ain't got caught yet, so they think they're never going to get caught. I've, I, I remember reading an article of this man that did something in his 20s, and they caught him in North Carolina when he was 80-some years old. They still locked him up. He had to pay for it. Recompense. <laughs> That's right. I'm, I'm done, but remember those devices. Be careful of Satan's devices. See, and you said something earlier, and, and, and that's why the Bible says, acknowledge him in all thy ways, mm -hmm. and he will turn on your navigation system and direct <laughs> you around traffic. <laughs> he will direct your path. You, know, you got to understand. Like, like right now, I, it's, it's, it's funny because sometimes people leave the church, and they'll call, pa call pastor back and say, Pastor, if you ain't left yet, don't come this way. That's what God is telling you. Hey, don't go this way. And you want to go that way anyway? Go ahead. I'm going to go that way anyway. Because earlier, somebody called back and said, hey, it's, it's people jump, getting out their cars and everything because the water went up and it was up to the doors. Mm -hmm. And people was getting, they said, don't come this way. Why would I want to go down there and get my car in the water and get stuck? See, just, you, sometimes you just got to listen to God. People don't want to listen to God. You want to do it your way. I'm telling you, you're going to mess up. You're going to find yourself in something. You're going to wake up one day and say, man, I missed it. And when I say missed it, it ain't, no, ain't nothing you can do. Once you miss it, it's My over. My Lord. And y'all keep sitting here thinking ain't no rapture going to happen. Oh it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. My God. I can't think of. There's nothing stopping them. Nope. Because, see, they said that the son of perdition has to be revealed. How we know he have it? Mm -hmm. right past me. See, there's a lot of things <laughs> that none of us know, but it's out there. It's out there. Mm. How you know? That's right. That's right. Pastor, they have practically done everything, everything that we are supposed to be looking out for. That's right. The numbers, uh, the way they're controlling money, is, is, they're doing it. God. And see, they get mad at me, Elder Johnson, when I sit, get in the pulpit and say, listen, some folk you ain't going to see no more. Mm -hmm. That's the devil. Yes, sir. The, the, the devil is in the details. Yes, sir. That's why this pandemic, it's not... Let me stop because then I'll be accused of saying something. But the, I don't believe it is as bad as they're saying. Yes, sir. And I'm going to tell you why. This is a test run to see how we're going to react. Mm -hmm. Watch what I tell you. Yes, sir. It's a test run. They want to see how you're going to react. All this stuff they're doing. Come on, man. Wake up. Better ask yourself what's next. Yeah. Something next is coming. The world is being conditioned for the Antichrist to take over. That's what it's, that's what's happening. That's what's happening. That's what's happening. I told y'all, Sunday, how do you develop a vaccine in three to six months? Never in history has that happened. They had to stop it yesterday because some trial person got sick off of the vaccine. And you want to give it to millions of people? Come on. No. And what they do is, see, that's what it is. It's a, it's a fear tactic. If you don't take the vaccine, your children can't come to school. Okay. Then she have to be taught at home. 
you're doing online anyway. Come on, wake up. All these other people in high places walking around like it ain't nothing. Think about it. They just, this, this, the, the, the World Health Organization just came back the other day and said it's only about 4%. They was, the numbers was jacked up. They was not telling the truth. It wasn't from COVID. It was from other problems people had. Come on, wake up. It's a method to condition even the church folk. Oh, we can just have church online. Let me tell you something, man. You can't get past Hebrews 10 and 24. You can't do it. I draw strength from you. Just us here tonight, I draw strength from all y'all. You got, it's, let me tell you, I'm, I'm a pastor. The, the craziest thing is for me to, to me, to sit here and try to preach to people over the uh, internet, Facebook, with nobody here. It's the crowd. I got the, you, I draw strength from the crowd. I got, oh, that's why I don't agree with doctors saying we do a video visit. Man, you got to see me to tell me what's wrong with me. If I can't see you, if you, if I'm the pastor, the man of God, and I can't see you, I don't know what problems you got. I got to see you. when you're sitting in the, in the pastoral seat, the man of God seat. Sometimes when you're sitting in the service, God will say that person, yeah. that person. Yeah. You can't do that if you're at home in your night clothes. I can't. What, what can I do? I can't see you. I can't. That's right. There's no way in the world. Scripturally, even when Paul, Paul couldn't even get back to Rome, to church in Rome, he said, I, in all of the letters, he said, I can't wait to get back to That's you. That's right. So that I can impart some spiritual gift. Because I can't do this by letter. I got to be in person to do that. I'm glad you said that word, spiritual gift. If you don't come to church, you're going to lose your spirituality. Okay, I got it. Let's talk about normal stuff. Don't eat. What's going to happen? So, in the spirit, if you're not eating of God's word, and listen, if I get hungry at home, there's only certain things I can cook or I can make, like peanut butter and jelly, turkey sandwich. I got to have a cook bag. I want some chicken tonight. I want some spaghetti. What I'm saying is you can only feed yourself Certain stuff when you're at home. You got to have a man of God to feed you. You got to have the chef to feed you. I'm trying to tell you. You got to. You can't. And you see, uh, that, what, what they getting now, some of them getting fast food. Now, number two, some of them ain't getting nothing at all. There are some people that haven't been online, haven't been in the church, ain't doing no reading, ain't doing no praying. They just living life, and they're going to get caught. I'm telling you. I'm telling you they're going to get caught. I don't know how. I don't know why I'm getting excited, but I'm trying to help somebody. I'm trying to help somebody. Can you, can you imagine the doctor say, oh, you sick? We got to administer you. We got to give you, a, 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 we gotta give you a, a needle. Oh, we got to operate. But you can't come to your house and do it. You got to understand that. You can't, you, you, same, so it is in the natural, it is in the spiritual. You got to be fed. You got to be in front of the man of God. Some people, you got to have that. You got to have, I got to see you. Now, God can put you on my mind, but I still got to see you. You know, see, and the reason I got to see you, because God gives you a certain amount of discernment. So you could be sitting in here, on a, in a service and looking fine, but I can look through that. And God can say, uh-uh, you better pray for that person. You better speak a word in that person's life. Gotta be here. I'm trying to tell you. And, and it, it, I, guess, I guess you go, who shall separate us from the love of God? You gotta go to all that. You can talk all that. You can run your mouth with it. You can say the scripture. But now, the rubber meets the road. That's what it is. I'm trying to tell you. The truth of the matter is, the mask that you wear can be doing more harm than not doing no harm. 
There's something called carbon monoxide. What you're doing, get in, get, go in your house tonight, Mike. Take your kids and your wife, go in the house, pull in the garage, leave the car running, and put the garage door down. You're inhaling, come out. Your body produces. What are you, in, what are you inhaling? That's right. I'm telling you. I know. And then they would wonder, so, so, okay, so why are people getting so sick? Because you, you, you're putting something on them to make them sicker. That's right. They did a, they did a thing. It's what you call it when you, you take your, your, your oxygen level, they call it something. And they was, what they call it? Pulsar. So what happens is, I test yourself. Take when you, if you got one, I got one at home, I had to keep up my, take it and put it on your finger without the mask. Then put the mask on and walk around for about 15, 20 minutes and put it on. It's going to be four or five degrees lower. Something ain't right. I'm not a doctor, but I ain't dumb. That's right. I see people in their cars driving with their mask on, in the car by themselves. I'm like, oh my God. You know why? Fear. Because people, they say, oh, it can come through your air vents. Oh, come on, man. Please. So, okay, I got it. Let's say it's all that. What happened to this almighty God that we serve in Psalm 91? I will let nothing come upon you. I'm going to put you on the moon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What happened to that? Think about it. At some point, have you ever got to the point where you got sick and tired of being tired and say, forget it, whatever happened, happened? That's where I'm at, ministering-wise. That's where I'm at. Man, whatever happened, happened. Because I know it's better for me. I, I mean, I'm in a win-win. If something happened to me, I'm good. But I want to live. But I, I, I'd, rather, I'd, rather, I'd rather be like uh, uh, Peter and walk on the water and know I got a safety net over there. And listen, you got to catch it. Even though when Peter, is it Peter? When he start going under, Jesus. See, what's going to happen is y'all going y'all that ain't coming and ain't doing right, you going to call Jesus and he going to say, "Who is that? Who are you? I don't know you." Either you going to believe in it or you're not going to believe in it. That's right. I'm trying to tell you. Come on, look. The, the, the NBA in a bubble. But nobody has gotten it since they've been there. Oh, isn't it amazing? The NFL had one person to get it this week. Amazing. There you go. Now, baseball get jacked up a little bit. <laughs> but <laughs> I don't know what they're doing. But even if it's the numbers, I mean, if you got 50 people with it, but you got 1,000 players... Man, come on. And then, and see, I can, I can break it down. I know I'm live. I don't care. You break it down. That's because they don't want you to mess with their money. The show must go on. You can go to Walmart, Target, restaurants. But if I say, cannot you pray with me for one hour? Can't do it. And let me say this while I'm sitting here. See, they got it. I, I've offered for members to come to this Thursday night thing. I've told my ministers, I've told deacons, I've told mission, I've told everybody, it's up to you. So don't try to turn it around and say, why you just got them. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't, you're not going to manipulate me and turn it back on me. I, I'm not crazy. No. You got to make that decision. So what you going to do when I say Thursday night prayer meeting is tonight? What you going to do? Stay on? Y'all keep getting used to it. I'm trying to tell you. And I'm not fussing. I'm talking fat. Keep getting used to it. There's no way. There's no one in God's earth that you can eat one time a week and keep living. Can't happen. And then some of us are so indulged in these daggone uh, 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 social media stuff. I mean, we look at quotes and repeat, uh, repeat people's quotes and everything. Come on, man. That's anybody can. It sounds good. Let me put that up. But are you living it? I don't know. I, I, oh, man, I wish I could find it. Man, one of my, 
one of my pastor friends put up something, and it makes complete, complete sense. I wish I could find it. Oh, man. It makes complete sense. Uh, if I can find it, if I can find it. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, uh, it was good. It was good. If I can find it. If I can't, I just can't, but I'm telling you. Man, man, man. Come on, come on. I'm going to let y'all go after I find it. If I don't find it, that means y'all got to stay. Hold on. <laughs> I got it. Man. Uh, no. No. I got to find it. I can't find it. Uh, uh, let me see if I can kind of like paraphrase what he said. It makes sense. Oh, here we go. Listen to this. The pandemic didn't shake those who are planted. It shook those who were considering a break. <laughs> That's right. I'm planted. Ain't, ain't, ain't bother me. They got what they wanted. Have you ever got what you wanted and then say, dang, man, I shouldn't have got this. That's right. You got what you wanted. That's right. That's right. The quail. I mean, I mean, he feeding me, but now nah, I want, I want something else. Huh? Man, just go with the program. My goodness. I'm done. It's 738. Thank y'all. Make sure you're here Sunday. 11 o'clock. First lady will be ministering. That means you don't take a break. You come to church. First lady will be ministering. 11 o'clock, 7610 Central Avenue, and Landover, Maryland. If you are a, a, a guest and you're watching and you need more information or direction, dial this phone number right now, 301-333-5300. Sunday, 11 o'clock. Am I forgetting anything? Oh, yes, you can also obtain some oil. Um, I'm not going to forget that part. Oil. You can get the oil. Call the same number, 301-333-5300, extension 202. Or you can go online. Go to scm.church. As a matter of fact, in a few days, you will see the whole website change. You're going to see a change. Some people uh, can't find us on Sundays. That was deliberate. I want you in the building. I don't want you sitting home. Not saying I'm not going back home, but I don't want you to sit at home and be like uh, uh, the leprous man and sit there till you die. You got to get up. Get up. See, you become comfortable. You become comfortable. And that, I'm going to tell you, just like this online learning school stuff, you got to be careful with that, man. You have kids, man. Come on, man. I'm not crazy. I'll, but let me go back. If it was me, I'd be like, I have some type of picture of me sitting there, and I'd be back eating, sleep or something. I'm trying to tell you, you're going to manipulate the system. You got to be, you got to be in, and that, that, that's, you know, you, I, I pray for my young people that are in school all the time because that messes with your mind. You have to, we were created to be around people, socialize. You can't do that. They, you can't do that. You, you got to understand that got to understand that. Don't say that again. They're dividing us. That's right. That's what they're doing. I'm going to go back to the Golden State Warriors. There's strength in numbers. Strength in numbers. Tonight I want everybody to plant a seed of $18. $18. Those of you that are still viewing, plant a seed of $18. I mean, you know, let me say this. Um, we used to have Tuesday Bible study, Thursday prayer meeting, and then Sunday. Some of y'all should have a whole lot of money because some of y'all ain't giving. Let me say that. You should have a whole lot of money. I hope, I hope that you uh, uh, do well with your money. Don't be like, again, don't be like uh, 
the, the, the children of Israel. Some of them died with meat between their teeth. That's right. You got, look, just because of this don't mean you stop giving. You got to give. You can give your way out of stuff. If God didn't give you nothing, you owe him everything. If he didn't give you nothing, you owe him everything. So, $18. You can go to our website, scm.church. Uh, click the button that says online giving, and you can donate what you would like. Or you can go to our cash app, which is dollar sign, SCM Church. Once again, that's dollar sign, SCM Church. I got something for you. Uh, everybody, everybody ain't going to hit the lottery. Listen where I'm going. And we don't believe in that anyway. I believe in giving my way to blessings and miracles. Now, everybody is caught up on what y'all call these things now. Susu. <laughs> Be careful. That's all I'm going to say. Be careful. Because anytime something is good, somebody will figure out a way to make it bad. Got to be careful. And you know what's strange? If I asked y'all for $500, you'd be like, mm, ain't no way. Somebody with a susu asked you for $500, here it go. Huh? I, I'm, look, when I get to heaven, I'm going I'm, to just say, God, can I have like just two minutes of your time? Can you explain to me why you develop people's brains like they are or allow it to go that way? I'm like, really? Think about it. I gave you choices. I know that. I know that, God. I know. But God, some of these choices these people making, some trust in, some in horses. But I'm going to trust in the Lord. Mm. Now, don't get me wrong. Ain't nothing wrong with a susu if it worked for you. But you have that same susu mentality when your pastor or your church asks you for $1,000 or $500. If, if, if I'm wrong, y'all tell me, Pastor, shut up. What? Oh, I thought you said, oh. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> Scripture Cathedral, that everybody that's watching, I love you. I want to see you Sunday. May you continue to be blessed. And remember this. It shall be well. I'm going to say it again. It shall be well. And everything is going to be all right. Peace.